uh, hello YouTube. So, uh, yeah, it's my third video. I'm still trying to get the hang of it. But um, obviously the plans are to try and make an introduction, sort of an in intro, excuse me, an intro and an outro to this, uh, this YouTube channel because, you know, I would like to put some good content on here for you guys. You know, hopefully increase my um, sort of awareness in terms of what I'm talking about. So it's just a brief one. So uh, this video is just going to talk about sort of uh, the sporting trends and sort of my reactions towards it. So. You know, um, I spoke about sports personality. Um, to me, um, you know, my my prediction was well off because um, of selective judging. Um, this is a new thing that's just come out uh, this year. So, who knows? You know, if that selective judging wasn't there, I might have been in the phone. But you know, to be honest, I think it's a bit pretentious, a little bit corrupt actually, and uh, I don't like it. Not because I lost, but you know, the people that actually were selected. Um, you've got the likes of Lizzie Arnold. I think that's right, Lizzie Arnold. Skeleton racing. I mean, no offence, but, you know, who, who the fuck follows skeleton racing? She's probably a phenomenal woman. She's probably a good role model, but, you know, no one follows skeleton racing. It's not big enough for her to be in the top five. Again, they picked five people out of that. I think it was Lizzie Arnold, Dina Asher-Smith, Lewis Hamilton, Harry Kane, and Garen Thomas. So my reaction um, was actually, <laughs> I'm not surprised that Harry Kane finished third. You know, even if I don't like him personally, you know, he's still got some um, followers. He's still a very popular sportsman. So, you know, for him to come third, you know, I'm not too fussed. Um, I didn't believe he would win, which is why I did say within my predictions. So. You know, he didn't win, come third. I'm not surprised by that. Um, Lewis Hamilton came second. Um, sorry about that. Again, um, yeah, I think it was a good effort by Hamilton. Um, it's a bit unlucky that he won it. To, a bit unlucky that he, did not, he didn't win it, to be honest. Um, I thought, you know, I thought he'd have had a good chance, really, but... Yeah, um, I think that's a fair result for him to either win it or come second because, like I said, he's achieved so much. Um, he's broken so many records. He's going to be smashing and dominating Michael Schumacher's record anytime soon. Um, I wish Mac I wish Schumacher, obviously, a healthy and speedy recovery. I know he's out of hospital now, so I wish him all the best. Um, I think Garant Thomas won it. Um, that did surprise me a little bit because I didn't think um, cycling, especially British cycling, wasn't that big. Um, he's not even that well known, Garrett Thomas. Um, he's, a, he's the first Welshman to win in nine years um, before Ryan Giggs in 2009. So, you know, not a lot of people saw it coming. But for him to be a second favourite before this even started, there must have been a reason. And obviously I missed it. So... Uh, fair play to Garen Thomas. Obviously, sports personality does recognise, you know, people that aren't really recognised like Garen Thomas. So I've got to give him respect on that part. But again, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that I feel like deserves it more. Tyson Fury, Andy Joshua. You know, there's, there's a lot of names that I did put within my previous video. So I was a little bit disappointed within the selection process. Dina Asher Smith. Um, I do believe she come within the... She was in the top five. Yeah, she was in the top five. Um, 100 metre, 200 metre sportswoman. Again, I don't know much about her, but, you know, athletics has always been very strong within sports personality. So, all credit to her, and hopefully uh, she makes the running next time. You know, like I said, I think women, especially women within sports, should be more recognised um, personally. And, you know, I'd like to see a woman win sports personality for a change. So, you know, who knows? Maybe next year it will happen. Moving on from that. So, I watched the Dillian White. This is boxing that I'm talking about now. So, you know, if you're not a boxing fan, turn it off. Or if you're just interested in my opinion or my, or my perspective, you know, feel free to keep listening. So, I um, I watched the Dillian White and Derek Chisora fight. Again, two fantastic heavyweights. I love heavyweight boxing. I love boxing myself. You know, that's how the injury occurred. Um, used to do it a lot before it happened, but you know, going to a professional level, you know, Derek Chisora, I think it was his last 
it was his last shot saloon to be honest and you know I, I was a bit gutted to see him get dropped in the 11th round um, by a cracking left hook by Dillian White um, I wasn't expecting that at all I mean Dillian White's not a power puncher whatsoever um, he's not really known to get you know knockout power um, he's more prone to actually get hit himself so for him to pull that off um, showed a lot of class and I do think he deserves to step up to um, the likes of Anthony Joshua for a world title because he's been waiting so long for it um, with Chisor I was gutted not only because um, I was so close to getting my bet um, I put a bet on um, Chisor to get a majority decision uh, obviously that was so close to coming in he had two judges within his favour um, you know if he didn't get knocked out that would have been the case at 50 to 1 but I did like Derek Chisor um, I do love that underdog mentality and I did think with David Hay and the condition that he did bring it's the best ever condition by far that I've ever seen of Chisor I did believe he had a fighting chance and I really thought he had to put a spanner in the works but I think, you know, sometimes I think politics gets in the way of boxing. And it was just inevitable that Dylan White was going to win, you know, just so he could be in the frame for the likes of the likes of um, Andy Joshua and stuff like that. Um, I hope he fights him in April because um, I can't see Wilder um, stepping up for Joshua. I think he's a bit of a pussy to rest. Um, I think he's gonna. I think he's going to have a rematch with Tyson Fury. But, you know, that's his choice. He's a grown man. He can do whatever he wants. But, um, you know, Dillian White, you know, they can have a rematch from 2015. And he's definitely improved. So it could be a massive tear up there. But, you know, 2019 should be a massive, you know, it should be a massive uh, year for sport. So, yeah, once again, thank you for uh, watching this. If you did watch it, <laughs> I know I've only got two subscri subscribers by now. But, I'm going to be covering a lot more uh, general and specific topics. I'm going to take you through my journey as well on my uh, bicep, uh, my distal bicep recovery. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to be anything like you've ever seen before. It's not going to be, you know, fancy stuff or anything like that. I'm just going to tell you from a completely different perspective and why I think you should watch these sort of videos over other um, distal bicep videos out there. All right, thank you for uh, watching this again. And, um, let me know what you think, you know, feedback is always good for this channel and for me personally to, you know, for personal growth. So, no, thank you once again. Uh, feel free to uh, subscribe to the channel, Greenies Corner. All right, thank you once again.